Hello, my name is Ryan Jarvis, Completions Engineer at Seneca Resources. This video is intended to show the general operation of a Spartec wellhead pressure recorder. Um, bought these gauges about a year and a half ago, back in 2011, to save money on wellhead recorder rentals. Uh, these gauges in particular are about $5,000 and to rent one for about a week is about the same, so they do they do save the company quite a bit of money and in order to save the company even more money I wanted to make this video so that we can make sure that they get maintained properly. So when you receive the Spartec gauge out in the field it's probably going to come in one of these boxes. They're just, you can just close it with these tabs here. I'm not going to do that. I'll just open it up. Um, this inside the case, it's a little bit messy in most of them. This actually has your uh, literature in it, has all the uh, how-to manuals if you need that. And then there's also a CD if you want to install the Spartec software. So that's included with every case. I tried to keep that pretty similar. And mo most of these, most of the time when we're doing defits on a pad, you'll get more than one gauge because you're going to have more than one well to pump a defit on. So going to the gauge, what I like to do is uh, I like to put a little note, a little post-it note saying when the gauge was last programmed, the duration of the program and then the frequency that it was programmed to. That way there's no question when it gets out into the field. You can, you can just install it and turn it on, which I'm going to show you how to do. So a little bit about these gauges. They are expensive. The, the stem, the stem here, the pre it has the uh, 10k pressure transducer in it. This part alone is about two thousand dollars. So we do want to keep take care of these so that we're not wasting money where it doesn't need to be spent. So as you can see, check pressure once on well one second. Uh, that means it's going to take a pressure reading every second and it's going to record that reading every second. And then it's uh, going to do that for 30 days. So it was programmed on the 3rd of January by myself. So, so a little bit of uh, detail here. You're going to need to take this faceplate off. It's just threaded on there. And you can see that there's a, there's a few different seals here. There's these rubber gaskets here and here. So that's what's going to keep the water out of it and make it uh, watertight. To turn this thing on, you just flip this little switch here. And then once it's on, it's going to cycle through the screen. And it's going to tell you like the pressure and the current temperature. It actually, it'll record both. Tell you the battery life, all that stuff. goes through a couple times when you initially turn it on. So right now this thing is already recording. And then in order to save battery life, these gauges, the screen will shut off. So in order, obviously you're not going to want to turn it on and off every time you need to grab a pressure to put in like your well view report. So it, it comes with this, this little magnet and you can just stick that on the stem. But what this magnet does, there's a, there's a switch in here and it's just a magnetic switch and when you hit that it'll turn the screen back on and then it will run through the cycle and it'll tell you the pressure and temperature so we don't really need that right now I'm going to show you some of the internals that way this actually just lifts right out of there you're never going to really need to do this unless you need to change the battery this is the battery pack right here um, you can just take that out if, if you need to but most of the time that's done for you so I wouldn't worry about that. The reason why I want to show you the internals though is you can see that this wire coming up from the stem gets plugged in here. So this stem here you don't want to tighten this down because you're going to twist that wire and possibly break one of the connections making this very expensive piece down here useless. The other thing to note is all the electronics in here. Electronics don't like water, that's common sense. So 
you want to make sure that when you when you install this on the wellhead, I like to turn them on before ins installation on the wellhead. That way, when it's uh, when it's off the ground up on the wellhead, you don't need to mess with putting this on and off. So when I install it on the wellhead, I usually just turn it on, and and I'll leave it on for the whole pressure test and everything. It's, it's good to pressure test these make sure that there's no leaks in any of the connections because for a good defect you, you don't want any leaky connections. So this thing is on. You're going to want to screw this faceplate back on. Get it nice and tight. It's like any kind of mechanical rubber seal. You want to compress those o-rings to, to get them to expand and make that seal. Once that's on there you can install this on the wellhead. This this connection down here is a half inch MPT. Usually we put a needle valve and then we have the bowl plugs too if you need one on. Like I said if you need to take the pressure reading just do that there and it'll run through the, the cycle. This isn't the best camera, so... The battery on these lasts quite a while. It's, it's usually more than we're ever going to put the gauge on. So, usually pretty good. So once once the gauge is removed from the wellhead, you do want to save battery. And the other thing we, we like to do is uh, keep the file as small as possible. These these files end up being pretty large when you're gathering one second data. So it's important that once it's taken off the well, you can just take take this faceplate back off. And there shouldn't be any water in there because you screwed it on nice and tight to start with. And you're gonna probably want to do this preferably inside the trailer, that way it stays nice and dry. And you can just flip the switch to the off position. Just hit it that way. Once it's off, I like to put this back on really tight. That way we're making sure it doesn't get damaged after the fact. So and then you can just put it in the case and and shut it. Make sure that And obviously, keep it in a place where it's not going to get lost. When you do take this off the well, it's important that you know which well it came off of. Right? If you have three gauges and three wells and you're kind of like, well, I'm not sure which ga gauge goes to which well, it kind of makes the defit data a little sketchy. We're not sure which well to correlate it to, and it makes our job a lot harder. Um, it also makes your job a lot harder because you're going to have to recall all that information. So if you just put a post-it or some kind of note on it saying I took this off the 42H or I took it off this well, it makes makes everyone's life a lot, a lot easier. And then you should have uh, a pump data sheet that, that you submit to someone saying all the information for the defit, how many barrels you pumped in, what was the rate, what was the pound per gallon brine that you put down hole and all that so uh, hopefully this helps with some of the questions I'm sure it doesn't answer all of them but please feel free to contact me